Welcome to today's edition of the Anaglyph Jukebox. You never know what you'll find on the old jukebox. Let's press B31. Okay, we've got Basil Wolverton, 3D. Basil Wolverton was probably most famous in his lifetime for winning a contest in the Little Abner comic strip by Al Cap for drawing the ugliest girl in Dog Patch. Out of acclaimed 500,000 entries, Wolverton won with his depiction of Lena the Hyena, and it was duly printed as the final reveal panel of a daily Little Abner strip in 1946. She was more than suitably hideous. This success led to Wolverton having his bizarre caricatures run as short features in Life and pageant magazines. But at that point, Wolverton had been a comics professional for a decade. He had created the successful sci-fi comic book character Spacehawk, which ran for 30 episodes in Target Comics, a total of 262 pages. Wolverton was most active in comic books between 1938 and 1954, turning out more than 1,300 pages. Master cartoonist Gayan Wilson said of Wolverton's work, quote, No small child exposed to his drawings could ever be expected to walk in a straight line again or vote a party ticket. Although he published him, William Gaines said, quote, I know this will upset you, but I've never been a fan. I find his work disagreeable. Sorry, it's also ugly. Wolverton drew ugly. Wolverton had started as a vaudeville performer, turned reporter, turned cartoonist. He began working for Timely in the 1930s, the publisher that would become Marvel Comics, with a humor feature about a super strong but dim-witted boxer, Powerhouse Pepper. Lots of screwball comedy and panels filled with throwaway gags. In the 1950s, Wolverton did a number of horror and sci-fi stories that are today considered classics of the genre, like The Brain Bats of Venus. We'll end our short presentation today with the famous opening splash page from that story. If you see a brain bat from Venus coming your way, run! Wolverton's intense, detailed comic pages would take him a day or more to draw in ink. He did his own lettering, almost unique among artists of his generation. To make a living wage, the average comic book artist of that time tried to crank out three pages a day of just pencil work. Wolverton's work appeared in a wide range of titles and formats, including Daredevil and Silver Street Comics, Mad Magazine, Panic, Cracked, From Here to Insanity, Famous Monsters from Filmland, DC's Plop, and a set of his signature uglies from Topps Trading Cards. Wolverton's meticulous cross-hatching graphic style has been described as spaghetti and meatballs for all its detail. Wolverton labeled himself the producer of preposterous pictures of peculiar people who prowl this perplexing planet. Wolverton was also a major influence on the underground cartoonists, especially R. Crumb, Bill Griffith, Trina Robbins, J. Kinney, and S. Clay Wilson. Wolverton was a political conservative who became religious later in life. He was baptized into Herbert W. Armstrong's Radio Church of God in 1941, and he was ordained as an elder in 1943. He turned his artistic energy in this direction as well. For the Radio Church, he did a book of illustrated Bible stories in 1961 with scenes of destruction from the Book of Revelations. When I was a kid, my mom used to read that to me before bed. We're only including two of the least nightmare-inducing images from that Book of Revelations series. Because, children, you're just not ready for the full-strength horror of the 3D Wolverton apocalypse. No one is. His son, Monty Wolverton, is a successful editorial cartoonist today whose work appears nationally. It's easy to see the influence of his father's style on his single-panel cartoons. 